Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have another soap making video for you guys, but for this soap, I did something a little bit different. For a long time now, I have been wanting to add citric acid to my soap. I got the idea from a few of my soaping groups and I finally made the push because I've been inspired by this one YouTube channel called Tolervo. If you haven't seen her videos, do yourself a favor and check them out. She makes the most beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, relaxing soaping videos that I've ever seen. Me, I could never. <laughs> I'm so much messier than she is. But because of her, I finally figured out how to do it. So in this video, I'm going to try to make soap using a little bit of citric acid in my water and I'm here to show you the results. So why add citric acid in soap at all? Citric acid acts as a cleansing agent in hard water. It reacts with the hard metals in the water and through that reaction produces a really foamy, lovely, stable lather. So without further ado, let me show you how I made the soap. I figured out how much citric acid to add to my distilled water thanks to Tolervo. And there's a little bit of soapy math you have to do, but it's super simple. And she suggested between 1-2% to of my oil weight. And because this was my first go at it, I decided to play it safe and just use 1% of my oil weight. But that's not the last step because we are adding citric acid that eats up some of the lye. So we're going to have to bump up my lye amount. So for every 10 grams of citric acid that you're adding to your soap, you have to add back about 6 grams of lye. And for my recipe, that turned out to be about 7 grams of lye. So pretty easy, I added my citric acid to my distilled water and I added my lye to my distilled water and citric acid solution and then I set it aside to cool down for about two hours. Now for all the other elements of this soap. For its fragrance oil, I decided to use Mo Rouge Canada's Juicy Pomegranate. Ever since I unboxed this fragrance oil, I have been inspired to soap with it. It is the perfect summer fragrance oil and it smells so fruity and so delicious. I highly recommend Mo Rouge Canada. I have a link in my description box below if you want to check out their stuff. And normally for a brand new fragrance oil, I don't recommend using a ton of colors, but for some reason I decided to be stubborn and risky and just use, I think I used five colors for this. <laughs> I picked out a beautiful purple, an orange, a darker pinky red mica, and a pink mica, and a white. And when I chose these colors, I wasn't sure how I was going to put them all together, but I knew it was going to work out somehow. Another reason why I decided to choose so many colors and be so bold was because this fragrance oil had one review on Morrish Canada's website and that person said how beautifully this fragrance oil soaked. So that gave me a ton of hope that I could use a ton of colors and have plenty of time to swirl. That ended up not being the case, but we're getting there. But even with that review, I wanted to play it safe a little bit. So I decided to go with my more fluid conditioning recipe that doesn't have any palm oil in it. So. Hopefully, I had the makings for an amazing soap. The next couple of steps played out as normal. I gathered my solid oils and butters together and I melted it down in a double boiler. And then I added to that pot all of my liquid oils. And I got everything else ready so that they were all within easy reach so that by the time I was ready to soap, I would have everything laid out in front of me. Once my lye solution had cooled down to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we were ready to go and I was ready to soap. After adding kaolin clay to my oils and butters, I then added to that my lye solution. As I was blending the soap batter with my stick blender, I was starting to notice that the soap batter was starting to thicken up a little bit faster than I was expecting. It may have been because of a few things. Even though my lye solution was around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I think my oils and butters were a little warmer than that. So any type of extra heat will cause a soap batter to accelerate a little faster than you want it to. And I also suspect that the citric acid might have played a role in this, but I have no idea. I have no experience using citric acid in my soap. So for those of you that use citric acid in your soaps, please let me know, Does this, is this normal? The citric acid cause an accelerated soap trace? So I decided to pick up my piece a little bit. I poured a little bit of my soap batter into one of my containers for my orange color and that was going to be my base color. And as I added the color and then a little bit of the fragrance oil into that container, that's when I knew we were starting to get into a little bit of trouble. The soap batter was starting to harden much faster than I was expecting and I had all these colors that I still wanted to use. I stick blended this color in with the fragrance oil as quickly as I could and poured it right into my mold. The next couple of minutes went by in a blur because whenever this happens, which is actually more often than you guys think, 
I enter in some sort of panic mode where I get this tunnel vision and all I want to do is get that soap into that mold and nothing else matters. I actually noticed when I was stick blending the fragrance oil into these colors that it wasn't incorporating really well because the soap was hardening so fast. So I had to abandon the stick blender after a while and hand mix the colors into the soap so that I don't get fragrance oil pockets. And that is a real concern when you're dealing with accelerated soap. So I mixed everything as thoroughly as I can for all of the rest of the colors and I started glopping them in. Another new element to this whole thing were these new containers that I got for soap making. And while these thin spouts were great for probably a really fluid batter, for a really thick batter, they, they weren't a big help at all. They're actually preventing the soap from pouring into my mold efficiently and in a clean way. So they weren't a big help, but I do like them though. For more fluid soap batter, I'm sure these containers are perfect, but not for what was happening that day. But I kept going, I kept pushing through it. When I got the first layer in, I remembered to swirl it with my swirling tool. And because the soap was getting hard so fast, I was banging it against the stainless steel table because with soap that accelerates that quick, you're bound to get a lot of air pockets. By the time I was making the second layer of swirls, I was super, super panicked. And I was just pretty much throwing the soap into the mold at this point. But even though the soap was getting pretty hard at this point, it wasn't rising. So I was getting a pretty smooth soap, even if it was um, not as fluid as I would like it to be. So my swirling tool cut through it pretty good. And as I was banging the soap um, against the table to get rid of the air pockets, it really looked like that was working to fill up all the nooks and crannies of the mold. By the time I got to the very top of the mold, I scraped out as much of the soap from the soap containers as I possibly could. And I remembered to save um, some of the soap in one of the containers so that I can do my signature swirly tops on top. And then I took a spoon and I made my waves so I can start texturizing everything. And usually with my old containers, it's pretty easy to scrape up the rest of the soap but with these guys because of the spout that was super thin. It was hard to get all the soap out of them, but I did the best that I could. So by the time I had finished texturing the top of the soap, I was looking at it and thinking, this needs more. And that is where the glitter came in. The more I use glitter, the more I realize that I love it. And I know glitter is not for everybody, but for me, I adore glitter on my Bath & Body products. I think it just adds such a nice punch to everything. So I decided to top the soap off with a little bit of biodegradable glitter. And honestly, that was a perfect touch to this soap. Once it was all done, I was pretty relieved. I was able to get all of the soap into the mold. I was still worried about what the inside would look like because it was hardening so fast. Whenever this happens, it's always a mystery and a surprise as to what the inside of that soap will look like. So I put it to bed on a counter. I don't cover the tops of my soap. I don't put it into an oven anymore. And then I cut that soap the next day in the morning. When I came back to the soap the next day, I saw that the soap had heated up a little bit in the mold and there was cracks along the top, which when that happens, it's not ideal. But for me, I don't really care. I don't think it's noticeable in a cut soap bar, so I wasn't too worried about it. That also might be a clue as to why the soap was hardening so fast. I definitely think I didn't allow the oils to cool enough. So that's something to note and remember. <laughs> When it comes to unmolding my soaps, my Winston & Walter molds make it so easy. If you guys haven't tried Winston & Walter molds yet, you are missing out. They make amazing, amazing molds because my soap pops out of these guys so easily. Whether it's a small two pound loaf like I was making today or a giant slab one that you might have seen Ariane Arsenault unmolding on her YouTube channel. Winston & Walter molds not only make gorgeous soap, but they make handling that whole process so easy. And to cut it, I use a single wire cutter that I've had for years now. Ever since I started my soap company, I've had this single wire cutter, which is in desperate need of replacement. <laughs> I think I, I've graduated to, you know, a more sturdy multi-bar cutter, but I'm so sentimental about things and I really hesitate to switch over to something else until that thing that I'm currently using is broken or I can't even use it anymore. But we're getting to that point with the soap cutter. <laughs> he still works pretty good though, as you can see here. Like I mentioned, I was pretty nervous about seeing the inside of the soap because of how it was behaving when it was wet. But as I was cutting into it, I felt a huge sigh of relief because the soap turned out gorgeous. I love how the swirls in the soap turned out and not even the swirls, the colors all together 
turned out beautifully. I really, really love Little Diva Mica by Fizz Fairy, and also their Lipstick Red Mica. It's really hard to find a true red mica out there, but I think Lipstick Red comes pretty close. And the orange and white base of it is pretty unique. I wanna try more soap colors like this where I'm layering the swirls in different colors. I already have been doing this with my Georgian Base Soap, and I think that's why it's such a good seller is because it's such an interesting soap bar. But the final result of these soaps just turned out fantastic. I'm so happy and proud of this soap. The scent of this soap is so good. <laughs> it's so fruity and wonderful and makes you so ready for the summertime. I can't wait to release this bar of soap and I'll probably be doing that in a month or so along with a few other summertime soaps that we are planning to release soon. The sparkle on top was the perfect finish to this gorgeous fun, summertime, fruity soap. Everything turned out for the best and I couldn't be more pleased. Now, has adding citric acid to my water affected my soap making process? No, it was super easy to do and I don't know why I was so worried. I know that I said that I suspect that the citric acid might have had something to do with my soap accelerating so fast, but now that I've thought about it more, I'm not sure that it did. It was definitely probably oils that were too hot. So this little extra step in my soap making process was nothing, it was minuscule. And I really think I'll start doing this for all of my soaps. And I wanna to mention to you guys one thing about this soap. When I was washing the dishes of this soap afterwards, I got so much lather, way more lather than I normally get when I'm washing soap dishes. And I highly think that it's because of the citric acid. So already I see a huge difference in terms of lather performance in this soap. So I'm super excited to see how these bars lather once they completed their cure in about four weeks. So there you have it, a brand new soap using citric acid. If you like this kind of video, please give it a huge thumbs up. If you wanna see more, then please subscribe. And if you already use citric acid in your soap, let me know in the comments below and tell everyone else why this is such a great idea and whether or not it actually makes a difference. And if you want this exact recipe, I have that on my Patreon, and a link to that is in my description box below. Thank you to all of my patrons who have already chosen to support me on there. You guys are amazing and fantastic. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially my bubble BFFs. These guys are the real MVPs, and I love engaging with all of you. Your questions are so fascinating, and they've given me so many ideas for future videos, so keep the questions coming. I love it, and I love all of you. Thank you so much. So that is it. Until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, keep making beautiful, interesting things like citric acid soap, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.